All right, it's party time. Wednesday, hump day. We're going to get into a lot of stuff today. Last night, I was out in Willow Park, Texas. We did a show uh, with the Ragamuffins. Uh, place was packed. People got there as early as 3 o'clock in the afternoon to get a seat. That's good stuff right there, man. That's good stuff. That's when it's going down, baby. Um, and we didn't, we didn't start playing until 8.30. <laughs> People waited. People waited for five hours. Um, and uh, God bless you for coming out. We had a blast. And uh, this weekend, I will be Friday night. I'm in Mills, Wyoming, and then Saturday night in Leeds, South Dakota. So, Casper and roughly west of Rapid City, a little ways. Uh, so, get your tickets at watchchad.com. Yesterday was a fun little experiment for me, though. Um, <clears throat> you know, every now and then I get a little interaction with people online. I don't know if you know that or not, but when you got 5 million followers on social media, people tend to say dumb stuff to you every now and then, quite often. Uh, let me go over a couple of ground rules for you uh, in case you were wondering. I think most of you know this at this point in time. If you get a message from someone saying they're me and they want to chat with you in private messages, that's not me. <laughs> that's not me. Now, if I make a video saying, hey, call to action, send me a DM, that's different. But if you see somebody with a fake deal, I don't want to chat with you, okay? I, I don't want to chat with most of the people I know. So I definitely don't want to chat with uh, people I don't know. Um, and, I, and if I'm going to chat with you, it will not be over social media. So don't fall for the scammers and, the, and all that stuff. Uh, but I get a lot of threats, and oftentimes, whenever, especially when we run an ad, and we do run ads, so like right now, uh, my guys at 76forever.com, who are the, you know, that's, that's my t one of my t-shirt companies, uh, the guys who handle distribution for that, we sell the hold the line coin, and we sell those coins, you've seen the advertisement for it, it's, it's a challenge coin. And what it is, it's a reminder that there's a lot more people than just veterans and law enforcement and firefighters that that hold the line. I mean, there there were a lot of people through COVID, through the shutdowns, through the, quote, pandemic, who did their jobs. I mean, that's everybody from dadgum bartenders to nurses that, you know, didn't bother to do the TikTok videos, actually did their jobs. Um, and, and all across the board... And no, don't get mad at me for saying you're a nurse. You did a TikTok video. And I'm not saying you never did your job. OK, it's a joke. But people who hung in there and did what they had to do, we created a coin, hold the line, because, again, uh, they held the line. I keep saying over and over again, CJ is sick of this broken record statement when I keep saying our country will not survive another shutdown. The only reason we survived the last one is because there were people out there who held the line. So we run an ad for that coin, right? I don't run it. Uh, but my distributors do and because uh, they have their own company and they, you know, they uh, asked if I would make a video for them. I did make the video. And so we run the ad. They run the ad. I keep saying we, but they run the ad. Well, obviously, it's my face and my name on my pages where the ads running. And when people start seeing ads of something, they love to jump on troll and they like to say a lot of bullshit. A lot of times, there's two places where I get most of the threatening language, okay? And I'm going somewhere with this, so pay attention because I want you to see the ridiculousness of social media. Uh, if I have a video that goes viral or a post that goes viral, or I should say a video that gets up into the range of 750,000 views, once it hits that mark, it's weird how at that point enough people are seeing it that now strangers who have no clue who I am they start to get pissed off at whatever the video may be. They can't take a joke. They don't like humor. They don't like my perspective, my convictions, my opinion, my politics, whatever, my view and outlook on culture. They don't like it. And they start to pop off. And it happens when we run ads. So I've had several in the last couple of weeks of people saying they were going to come and meet me face to face at a live show. I've had people who said they were going to uh, pay attention and do what they could to crush any businesses that I'm involved with. Uh, I've had people who said they were going to beat my ass. In fact, there was one particular one yesterday who kept saying that they were going to beat my ass, that as soon as I was done raping my nephew, they were, they were going to come beat my ass. And so that rhetoric continued on. And I said, I want to try something. I, I want to try an experiment. 
I said, I'm going to do something I never do. I'm going to report a comment to Facebook. So I did. This is harassment. It's a threat of violence. I reported it. This morning when I woke up at 5.30 a.m., reached over, grabbed my phone, I had an email from Facebook, from Meta, that said they now had a conclusion on my report of the comment. They said, what do you guess? What do you guess? That comment did not violate community standards. We found nothing wrong with that comment that violated community standards. Now, if I would have told someone that I was going to beat their ass, uh, I would have been flagged. I probably would have been suspended for at least seven days off of Facebook, probably 30 at this point. Um, There would have been algorithmic markers against my account so that the reach would have died out. And it would take about three months to get that reach back in place. Um, But reporting that comment of someone who literally said, I'm going to come and beat your ass. (laughs) That's not a violation of community standards. So F your community standards, which is another great T-shirt. F your community standards. And, um, yeah, so that's the hypocrisy of social media, particularly Mark Zuckerberg's side of things, since it was on Facebook. And another weird thing that happened to me this week is I called out Elon Musk on a post. My buddy Larry Taunton wrote uh, an in-depth multiple tweet deal, a little paragraph thing on an article thing on Elon Musk and why Linda Iaconelli, who is the CEO of Twitter, is actually not for free speech as a former board member of the World Economic Forum. But uh, he called out how conservatives are consistently being throttled on the X platform. And uh, Elon Musk said that they were going to be reviewing things because, you know, for the first time, uh, Twitter is actually rewarding everyone, you know, on this platform with monetization and things like that. And I said, well, I've got 411,000 followers on X and I still uh, start getting like, you know, a hundred reactions to my tweets. Um, Graham Allen, who our buddy Graham Allen, he's got less Twitter followers and he's getting 11, 12, 13,000 reactions on his. It wasn't always that way because I've talked to Graham about it and he doesn't know why, but he gets it. People like Cat Turd. When Cat Turd gets, <laughs> when Cat Turd has 2 million followers and consistently is getting 25, 35,000 reactions to a tweet, you know, that's proportionally accurate, I think, with 2 million followers. When I've got half a million and I'm only getting 100 reactions, I, I don't know what happened, but I will tell you this. Ever since I tweeted at Elon Musk on this topic, My stuff has now gone up to about 1,500 to 2,000 reactions on the tweets. You can literally see where the switch flipped on there. Um, Still not proportionately accurate. I love it when people say, you got half a million followers on Twitter, and you can't even get any reactions. Thank you for proving the point of censorship of conservatives. You did exactly that. Now, I started out yesterday's show changing gears to more important things besides my social media. Um, I started out yesterday's show by saying men are better than women in every area. We debated that. We discussed that. Of course, I was being facetious. I believe women are better than men at most everything. I really do believe that. Uh, if women knew how to, to use what they've got, they could rule the world. But we know we, they could because men are stupid. Women are crazy. Men are stupid. Stand by that. I can defend it. But it's true. Um, but I don't know if you guys have seen the article or not. But... Um, Again, proving the point that the world actually thinks that men are better than women at everything. Uh, U.S. regulators may soon approve human trials of artificial wombs. Now, I've seen that movie. It's called The Matrix, where, you know, people are plugged into these bubbles and they're born and they spend their whole life there. But uh, they're uh, the advisors to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration of all administrations, of all organizations, are convening Tuesday and Wednesday. That's this week for closed door meetings to discuss the prospect of approving artificial wombs in human trials. I think they've been doing it with sheep. And uh, they would basically create, as you would imagine, a fluid filled pod. 
um, as opposed to being in a symbiotic mother. Um, so they're wanting to uh, put people in pods. We're going to be pod people. Now, I don't know if you could immediately use your critical thinking skills and see where this is going, not only eradicating women even further, but uh, this, this now they're going to do it under the guise of helping struggling babies. Now, interesting to me that the scientists out there are going to say, okay, you can go out and abort the baby that's in your womb all the way up to nine months of pregnancy. Uh, but when babies in the womb are struggling, it may be better to just have them in a pod. I think you could begin to see the hypocrisy in there. What is, what is in that womb? It's a baby, right? It's a baby. So if you're going to use the justification of these fluid-filled pods to plug people in and grow babies, well, what is it you're growing? It's not, it's not DNA tissue that's, you know, protoplasmic blobs. It's not just a clump of cells. You're literally growing babies, right? So there's a defense of the, uh, the, the, the critical value of human life, even in the unborn. But uh, they're wanting to do this, and then you can see where there's going to become an ethical quandary on an issue like this because, ah, we grew it, we own it. <laughs> I mean, we made, we put the baby in the pod, ah, ah, the baby belongs to us now. I mean, now we're getting into gen uh, genetic modification potential. You're getting into. Have you, did you say, did you guys ever see the Ethan Hawke movie um, Gattaca? Yeah, Ethan Hawke, Uma yeah. Thurman, and um, Jude Law. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it was. Movie. I need to go back and rewatch that. That that reminds me a lot of that. Where if you, there was a slight genetic defect to you, you weren't. Yeah allowed in society well it does i mean it does bring up like we're gonna get to designer babies here very yeah soon. that's 100 percent. you're yeah. gonna get gucci babies yeah which like part of me says that's bad but like that's also <laughs> probably gonna be pretty cool <laughs> right well i mean if we can get our supermodels made by ai yeah then we might as well go ahead and make some perfect people too right yeah you know? i want like i want people popping out just yoked 180 iq mm -hmm. that's the way to up the human race, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, I mean, that's that we're really going to move forward eons, yeah. really. Now, we're going to be screwed. Oh, we're, we're toast. The three of us sitting in this room right now, we're, yeah, we're going to be screwed. Honestly, I'm, I'm kind of hoping World War III pops off and they shoot the nuke right at Texas. <laughs> I want to go out quick Just, and painless. If the nukes hit, drive towards the mushroom cloud. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah not, don't, don't try to outrun I'm it. I'm not surviving nuclear winter. I want to go down quick and easy. No, no, that's... that's um, uh, but I mean, you, when you hear this science experiment they're doing to ensure the baby remains in a, quote, fetus like state such that the digestive system does not activate and fluid doesn't drain from its lungs. The surgeon must jab tubes into the baby's umbilical blood vessels, then immediately dunk it into so-called bio bags filled with a sterile fluid that mimics that found in a real amniotic sac. So the scientists agree with me. That uh, women are obsolete. There's no need, Mom. You're done. The tubes that have been inserted into the baby's umbilical blood vessels would provide it with nutrition, while a so-called membrane oxygenator would provide the baby with air to breathe. Yeah. Oh, boy. I'm telling you what. We're going to recreate the fetal environment. Baby survival rate. Now, if you're smart, you're already formulating arguments if you're pro-life on how to use this against the critics, okay? Because, because the, those that are critic, critics and talk about women's reproductive rights, if you think the government, if the Food and Drug Administration, I mean the Food and Drug Administration are figuring out ways to replace women and their ability to, to uh, produce children, well, let me just tell you guys, uh, <laughs> Women are being made obsolete. They don't need you anymore. Uh, but this is a critical argument, if you can think with some complexity here, on how to go at those who talk about women's reproductive rights. They don't believe in women's reproductive rights. This just proves it right here. They're going to replace your reproductive rights with amniotic pods, bio bubbles. Um, yeah, so if you're pro-life, here's your argument. I'm giving it to you. That's free, all right? Got more I want to talk about on, on sort of that topic again. We're going to keep replacing women. God, we got so much to get to today. Hey, uh, 
Do you think your face <laughs> enjoyed the summer as much as you did? You know, we could get a lot of damage. Uh, there's a testimony from Ella, Rockford, Illinois. She said, I have both age and acne spots, and this stuff is actually fading both of them. The serum is worth every penny. What she's raving about is the dark spot corrector from Genucel. It's a must-have after months of record heat and humidity. Sunspots, brown spots, discoloration, even red and flame patches all disappear in front of your very eyes. And here's the Genucel amazing guarantee. You'll see results day one or your money back. So take advantage of the Genucel most popular package, which now includes the dark spot corrector, plus the classic Genucel bags and puffiness treatment and immediate effects. All at about 70% off. That's a great deal. So you can try the best skincare in the world for yourself completely risk-free. Go to GenuCell.com slash watch Chad today. And you will start looking years, even decades younger, starting tomorrow. That's GenuCell, G-E-N-U-C-E-L, GenuCell.com slash watch Chad. And say goodbye to the dark and liver spots, bags and puffiness under the eyes, the crow's feet. GenuCell.com slash watch Chad. Chad, we'll be right back. All right. Talking about that Genia Cell stuff, man. I tell you what, CJ eats it up. I like using the stuff under my eyes. Um, love that stuff. That box comes in, and CJ and her mom, boy, they, just, whoo, they own it. They're like vultures on a carcass, man, just grabbing that stuff. Uh, speaking of carcasses, sheep get slaughtered. Realwomensclub.com. Don't let the name fool you. We're pissing everybody off over there, not just, not just the lady boys. <laughs> sheep get slaughtered. Ah, here's a fun one. The Marie Keating Foundation. They've claimed that women, quote, assigned male at birth. <laughs> I'm going to keep hammering this thing because I want my listeners, I want you guys who watch this show to understand cons consistently how stupid our world is. Women assigned male at birth have a prostate. That's their statement. Um, quote, prostate cancer awareness is important to everyone born with a prostate. Men... <laughs> and those born male or assigned male at birth. A woman who was assigned male at birth has a prostate. <laughs> We're highlighting that everyone with a prostate needs to get their PSA checked. Get your balls checked while you're there, okay? Might as well. I mean, you, if, you're, if you're concerned about cancer while you're in the shower and you're all soaked up, Run a few fingers around your ball sack and see if you feel any lumps there. Okay? The, um, yeah. Um, Chaya uh, Reichick, uh, this lives of TikTok. I don't know. If, I love Chaya. I don't know if I ever say her name right, even when I talk to her. Um, she, she tweeted, she said, only men have prostates. Thank you for coming to my science lesson. <laughs> so good. Uh, so good. She's such a smart girl. Um, and she's a girl. She doesn't have a prostate. Uh, but I mean, it's men. It's men. That's what we're looking for. And so, uh, yeah, men over 40 should probably have their prostate checked. And yeah, check on your balls while you're there as well. You might have, have uh, and I always get this word wrong too, epididymis, epididymitis, where you got a clump of sperm in there that needs to get out and your doctor will tell you to go masturbate. All right which is very different for boys than it is girls. Very different, okay? The results are very different as well. Uh, so if you feel that lump, you might not have testicular cancer. You might just need to ejaculate. Again, very different for, boy, for boys than girls. You know why? Because boys and girls are different. Can they actually write you like a prescription for that? Uh, I had a doctor do that once. <laughs> True story. True story. I found a lump. I think I was like 22, 23 years old. I found a lump. It was, it was sort of painful. Which I don't think testicular cancer lumps are painful. And I went to the doctor, and he was like, oh, yeah. 
<laughs> you gotta you gotta you gotta go uh, masturbate. <laughs> you need to ejaculate. And I was like, doctor's orders, swear to God, Jesus won't be mad. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they would actually tell you to do that. They did. <laughs> it's a true story. The doctor, he said, oh, epididymitis. <laughs> Epididymis. Uh, he goes, you need to ejaculate. That's what a good, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the problem with being a good Christian boy is uh, you get a little retentive down there. <laughs> uh, the school board, this is Pennsylvania. They voted to continue letting transgender students use whatever damn bathroom they want. And, of course, the uh, hundreds, about 400 of their students walked out of class in protest. Good for them. I mean, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? You guys were all about it when when they were walking out over, you know, gun control and stuff like that. So they're, maybe they're tired of pissing next to, you know, a dude. Some of these girls. And, I, again, anything to get out of class, but I'm, I'm for this. Uh, this is how you stop this nonsense. But um, it's one way to stop this nonsense. But the fact that they're continuing to do this uh, is it, just insane. I know people are going to say, well, you scared of somebody. Listen, I've literally stood at the pisser in a bar next to a guy in a dress standing there pissing in the urinal next to me. I'm not real worried about that. However... When a biological male goes into my daughter's bathroom, I start to get a little concerned, a little bit concerned. Uh, in fact, I don't want any men of any form around my daughters ever <laughs> in, any, in any capacity. Stay away. Stay away from them. But no, uh, the fact that we're still continuing to do this and having this debate, absolutely insane. I want to play you a video. Um, this is where we are. Play clip number one, please. Mm -hmm. Of this idea of parents' rights, that parents have a right to know. They have a right to know if their child is going by a different name or using different pronouns in school. And the thing that keeps hitting me about this is that parents don't have rights. Not parents' rights. Kids have rights. Mm. Individuals have rights. We have seen in our legal and justice systems that the decisions that parents make can be legally overridden by their children. Children who are old enough to understand a concept are old enough to provide their own independent consent to that. And if a kid knows what pronouns are, then frankly, they're able to consent to changing their own pronouns and their parents do not need to be involved in that decision. Gobbledygook. Sheep get slaughtered. Let me tell you something. I've raised four kids. They have no rights in my home. <laughs> they don't have individual rights. They do what I tell them to do. Now, good guy. I have a conscience. I listen to their opinions. I listen to their thoughts. I want to hear what they have to say. I do. But at the end of the day, no, they, they don't have any rights. This idea that everybody gets a say in everything is a bunch of bullshit. And that's why our country is in the shape that it is. The fact that we just let anybody vote for somebody that's going to be running for office, that's dumb. Let's go back to what the founding fathers did. Had to be the head of the household and had to own property. Oh, my God, that's so antiquated and effective. It's effective. Why are we letting the scum of society who have no skin in the game go out there and dictate our political and cultural future? I, you can't make an argument. Oh, everybody has a right. No, they don't. We've just given everybody a privilege. Everybody don't have the rights they think they have. And my kids in my home don't necessarily have the right either. I didn't have the right when I lived in my father's house to go get my ears pierced or to go get a tattoo. You know what happened, though? I became an adult. <laughs> I became an adult. And you know what? I still remember the day my dad saw a little tattoo peeking out. Where is it? This little one right here. Peeking out of a V-neck. He said, what the hell did you do? <laughs> hey, what did you do? And I still had the fear of God in me because, again, I respected my father. Now, again, was he a dominating, domineering, you know, tough guy persona, macho, what he said goes? Is that the kind of person he was? Yes! 
And you know what? It kept my ass out of trouble. Whenever I got to a point where I wanted to make a stupid decision on a Friday or Saturday night out with my ball playing buddies, you know what I heard? I heard the voice of my father saying, don't you do that shit. And it kept me alive. It kept me out of jail. It kept me from having to pay fines to the legal system. It kept me out of court. It kept me from cutting, you know, things off of my body or having stuff, you know, permanently scarred on my body before I knew. (laughs) <laughs> what I really wanted in life. I don't know if you know this or not, just as, a, as an example. These tattoos, they don't go away. I can go out there and try to get them laser removed, but I don't want to do that. This was a permanent decision. You know, when I started getting it, when I was about 32 years old, 33 years old, something in that nature, when I was old enough to know what I wanted, what they meant, what it meant to me. So no, my father would not have been okay with that when I was 15, 16 years old. So this idea of individual rights and parents don't have the rights, lady, you're smoking dope. And I don't mean, I don't mean the good relaxing kind. I'm talking about the kind of stuff that makes you real freaking stupid, real stupid. So no, kids, you don't have rights. You don't have rights. Because you know what you'll do? You'll do like the kid I mentioned in the video earlier this week. You'll take the two Oreos versus the $10,000 in cash. Because you are seeking the immediate gratification, which is what stupid kids do. So when they want to jump into a trend and say, oh, I think I'm going to be a boy today. You got a parent that steps up and says, no, the hell you're not. No, you're not. And a loving parent will walk you through that. And try to help you through the confusion. And, and now, you turn 18 years old, Katie, bar the door, you can go out there, cut your dick off, get tattooed, join the military, get piercings so many in your face that the, your skin whistles when the wind blows. Go do it. When you're an adult, go do it. Now, granted, I don't think you're an adult at 18. That's just what society has said. I think you're not an adult until you're about 25 years old and your prefrontal cortex has you know, somewhat gotten fully developed. But you'll understand, by the age of 42, I'd change careers seven times. Good God. I still don't know who I am. People are like, Chad Prather, I've never heard of you. Who are you? I'm 51 and still trying to figure it out. So here we are. Guys, no. This kind of, this nonsense right there saying, oh, the kids have the right to go out and do what they want to do. No, no, they don't. Now, you can call me narrow-minded. You can call me puritanical. You can call me dominating, over-dominating, overbearing, bigoted. You can call me whatever you want to call me. But I'm telling you, the voice of mom and dad, not the bio bubble that gives you birth. The bio bubble doesn't have a conscience. The AI robot nanny doesn't have a conscience. Doesn't mainstream media, social media, TikTok, the influencers, they don't have a conscience. They're after the clicks and the likes and the views. It's up to the parent who has a vested interest. And so until you're out there, kids, with your own vested interest in society, you don't have the right to make those kind of decisions. You don't. Thank God for parents. The bio bubble wouldn't have given a shit if I got my ear pierced. I don't have my ear pierced to this day. Like, my dad's been gone six, seven years now. Sort of thinking about going and getting it pierced just because now, at this point, my father would come back and whip my ass. Let me tell you something. I was so intimidated by my father after he'd had two strokes and was paralyzed on the right side of his body, he could still just give me that look. It keeps you out of trouble. This idea that kids have rights. You shitting me. Uh, Hey, guys, uh, if you're like me, sometimes you think the unthinkable is going to happen soon. But with all the distractions of smoke screens in the media, we probably won't see it coming. That's why it's smart to invest in emergency food. And you got to do it today. It's better to have it, not need it than to need it, not have it. My Patriot Supply is the nation's leader in emergency food storage. You can go to my special website, preparewithchad.com. Preparewithchad.com. They'll automatically help you save 25% on My Patriot Supply three-month emergency food kit. You need a kit for every member of your family. You'll enjoy a wide variety of delicious meals, 2,000 calories a day. Stock up now before everybody else panics. Free shipping is automatic. Your order ships fast and discreetly. Preparewithchad.com. Go get it. Go get it. Preparewithchad.com. Be right back. (music) 
guys need to be getting you some uh, gold bullion too. Gold bullion. You need bullion. You need numismatic coins, and yeah, you need you need some precious metals in your life. UnitedPatriotCoin.com. Go get the Patriot Pack. Tell them I sent you. Um, they're just my friends. I'm just telling you. I do it. You should do it too. Um, they get mad at me when I tell you about things like that because those aren't sponsors of the show. Not sponsors of the show. Don't tell, Brandon. We'll see. I'm just telling. I want you to be prepared, guys. And you go. You do your. You know all your stuff you want to. IRAs, 401ks, like we talked about with Birch Gold Group. Do, do all those things. Get ready. They've lost their minds, people. They've lost their minds. And the problem is, if they do blow up a nuclear bomb, the, the, the thing is, the reality is, more people are going to survive it than you think. And it's like Glenn Beck, when he was on the overtime with me a while back, and we were talking about what happens in the first 72 hours of some apocalyptic event. Let's say you have an EMP and there's no power in the country and, and the power's off 72 hours and then the bad guys realize the good guys ain't coming. So uh, I'm just going to say a couple of numbers here and those of you who know, know, let him who has ears, let him hear. 556 five, and 223, okay? And, and those of you who know, 556 five, and 223, you need to have box after box of it. <laughs> Lots of it. Oh, but I don't know if you guys saw this or not. The FBI has lost count of how many paid informants were at the Capitol on January 6th. What the? F Dude, it's a clown show at this point. They had to perform an audit to figure out the exact number. So the FBI had paid informants there January 6th. Lost track of the number. Yeah, you heard it right. Performed an audi audit. Confidential human sources is what it was called. Mm. How many FBI field offices were present that day? Um, at least one informant was communicating with his FBI handler as he entered the Capitol. And uh, that is according to Stephen uh, Dantuono, who is formerly in charge of the Bureau's Washington field office. Dantuono um, testified behind closed doors to the House Judiciary Committee that his office was aware before the riot that some of their informants would attend a Stop the Steal rally thrown by former President Donald Trump. But he only learned uh, after the fact that informants run by other field offices were also present. So the right arm didn't know what the left arm was doing is the bottom line. They were all, every office was sending, you know, fed boys out there. And uh, so Washington field office had to ask the FBI headquarters, listen to this, listen to this, folks, to do a poll <laughs> or put out something to people saying, were any, uh, were, were any agents involved? They put out a poll. Um, we started getting responses back from FBI headquarters, he said, which helped identify which field officers had planted confidential informants in the crowd. Uh, uh, there was a paid informant from Kansas City's field office. Um, he was communicating with his FBI handler uh, as people went into the Capitol. Uh, as he went into the Capitol, too, apparently. Um, <laughs> I, 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 okay, can't make it up. Can't make it up anymore, folks. This is, I can't with this stuff. Uh, and then, of course, I mean, I don't know if they're going to wear brown shirts or not, but the Biden administration is now coming out with a gun control uh, office of gun control. Isn't that right? What are they calling it exactly? Let me find that thing. They're going to do a, um, God, where is it? Ah, did I pull it out of this thing? I lost it. But yeah, they're doing a, uh, they're going to put together an office of gun control. Now, don't forget, uh, don't forget, Hunter Biden is facing felony charges and real jail time because of guns. <laughs> so uh, ahead of his 2024 election, Federal Gun Control Office. Mm, uh, I, again, they're coming, folks. They are coming. So like I said, 223556, whatever the, uh, whatever the uh, necessary <laughs> supply calls for. Um, you better get it because they're going to make it where you can't get it here pretty soon. They're going to try everything they can to do that. So uh, 
I, tomorrow, on tomorrow's episode, we're going to try to do it today, but I, I really want to spend some time uh, with my good friend, Lieutenant Colonel Buzz Patterson. He's going to come on the show. If you follow Buzz Patterson on Twitter, he, he's insightful. He's funny. He carried the nuclear football. He lived in the White House during the uh, uh, Clinton administration. And just, he's a fighter pilot. He was a combat commander, combat pilot. Just, just a unique individual and i got some questions i want to ask him about some of this stuff that's going on in our world um but gavin newsom the the governor of california is actually defending hunter biden's business deals he said that the family influence peddling is well quote hardly unique (laughs) well it's also hardly legal gavin play clip number two well republicans have shown that hunter biden he tried to leverage his father's name and uh, that the president allegedly, before he was president, joined phone calls that Hunter Biden's business associates were on. Okay. Do you see anything inappropriate there? I, I don't know enough about the details of that. I mean, I've Why seen not? a little of that. Uh, if that's the new criteria, uh, there are a lot, of, a lot of folks in a lot of industries, not just in politics, where people have family members and relationships and they're trying to parlay uh, uh, and, a little, and get a little influence and benefit in that respect. Uh, that's hardly unique. I don't love that any more than you love it or other people I imagine love that. Uh, we want to see a lot less of that. Uh, but an impeachment inquiry? Give me a break. This is student government. Student government. Threatening debt again or rather threatening a government shutdown again after we went through that process with the debt ceiling? This is student government. This is a joke. Yeah, shut it down anyway. <laughs> I like that idea. Let's just shut it down. How about that, Gavin? Since, since I, I love a guy who says, well, I'm not really aware of the details, but then I'm going to tell you how stupid it is to, to pursue anything like this. Yes, an impeachment inquiry. Let's take a look at it, because believe it or not, influence peddling, it, it's not just another company. I mean, this isn't Exxon and the CEO saying, hey, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. We'll give you some favors out there. No, this is the vice president of the United States peddling influence and using his son to do it. So... Yeah, I, I would say that it's pretty relevant, especially now that the guy who was vice president then is now president now. Um, I think we need to look into it. How about that, Gavin? Let's take a look. And Gavin's probably okay with it because he's already chomping at the bits and licking his chops to be in the Oval Office himself. Especially when you got a job like that where you can take 45% of the time and stay on vacation. Yeah, what a sick uh, p- paid uh paid leave plan he's got there I dude mean, we i'm get like, telling you what do we get like three three four weeks i don't know i mean tops? blaze tv i think i forget how many episodes a year they expect out of me but it's too many yeah yeah we need at least three months off a year i mean i think i could be far more effective at this show if they just let me do one a week once a month yeah like yeah they're you know overworking what I'm us what do we and y'all like? would have something to look forward to exactly yeah i'll just show up on the first Wednesday of the month. And I'll be like, all right, see you guys in October. Yeah, I'd like a pay increase for it as well. Yeah. They should be paying us more to do less. Well, I would think that it would increase my sense of influence and I could peddle more shit. Yeah. Like I, I could peddle more gold and silver. And, I was going to say, think of all the products we could peddle. Emergency food. Yeah. Chamonix, face cream. Yeah. Listen, the apocalypse may happen, but my face is going to be stellar. <laughs> and I don't know if you understand what sunspots come from a uh, hydrogen bomb. <laughs> but it's that, very right, bad for the pores. Yeah. <laughs> that, my friends, is why you need Chamonix. <laughs> Chamonix. And uh, you can melt that gold down right there when the bomb hits. Just melt the gold and the silver down. And you just got one big fat coin. And uh, anyway, all right. Uh, you got to clean your guns, folks. Keep telling you, two, two, three, five, five, six. Um, it's a hassle. It is. Sometimes you don't want to do it. You want to just go to the range, shoot, and then put them back in the bag and quit. Now you got to clean your gun. It's a dirty job. You got to do it. Uh, we've talked about the patches. Messy. We've talked about the ropes. That is not always effective. What I like to use, and I've seen several of you in the live chat mentioning this because you've tried it. You love the solution, which is Barrel Buddy. Barrel Buddy compresses. Fills the interior of your gun's barrel. It cleans the rifling grooves. It has seven different sizes, which means it'll match any caliber firearm you may own. Barrel Buddy is composed of the polymers that won't leave behind residual particles, which makes it safer. It scrubs. It collects the goo, and it absorbs the remaining residue. It buffs the interior surface clean. You can lubricate your firearm with it. Anyway, 
it's a cool, cool little tool. Cleaning your guns, really important. It's a huge step in being a responsible gun owner. Barrel Buddy, it's a new concept, but I think it's going to take over the world of cleaning your guns. It's a better way to take care of your firearms as well as it being safer, so get some. You're going to love them. Go to BarrelBuddy.com today. That's BarrelBuddy.com. Be right back. Mm, 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 mm. Let's let's go back to that topic again that I love so much about this parents thing. Um, by the way, that's the reel you got to cut right there. Oh, I mean, it's, yeah, I, I want a full clip of that in my possession as well because kids don't have rights. No, sorry, uh, uh-uh. uh, uh-uh. nah. <laughs> uh, play clip number three, please. Those same words that you heard in terms of um, warning segregation post Brown v. Board of Education, those same words you hear today. It's not, you know, I, I, was, I was kind of gobsmacked when I was on the, I was talking to Southern Poverty Law Center and they showed me the same words, choice, um, parental rights, and attempt to divide parents versus teachers. In that point, it was white parents versus um, other parents. But it's the same kind of words. Yeah, but see, there is a separation between parents and teachers. I mean, a, a, again, go back to the beginning of the show, the bio pods. They're wanting to put kids in these pods. If, if you allow that type of weird science to transpire in society, it's going to bolster their argument. It's going to make them even more courageous to say dumb things like this to where it, the, the teachers have just as much rights as the parents do. It's going to add to the rhetoric of the Merrick Garlands of the world who call parents who get involved with school board meetings domestic terrorists. It's coming. You think the idiocracy is here now it's the insanity is the absurdity of this is about to get on steroids uh house of cards built on a fault line it will fall in on itself the destruction will be great people will lose lives they will lose so much over this but i'm telling you they're going to all find out the hard way with this deal do not let the state have your children those of you who chose to be teachers there's been a lot of misconceptions saying that over the years i criticize teachers uh if you still support teachers unions i criticize that that's a bad decision that is allowing communism to infiltrate uh in the influence of the education of children the brainwashing of children they're not good I'll blame you for that. Uh, If you are continuing to push certain indoctrination matters such as CRT, SEL, things that are being passed down to you from the curriculum makers and the school boards of the world, then at some point you're going to have to make a conscientious decision to rebel against that because you are now actively participating, even if passively, you're actively participating in the mind-numbing brainwashing of America's youth. So I've stopped calling it public education. I've started calling it government education, and more specifically, government indoctrination. Get your kids out of public schools because the government wants to brainwash them. It's funny how social-emotional learning, when I first started talking about that a couple of years ago, everybody pushed back on me about how the, the teachers have got to do this because it's so integral in the development of the child. To the exclusion of the parent, by the way, y'all left that little part out, now the majority of people out there are seeing the evils of the SEL curriculum that's being added because it's just a Trojan horse that brings more uh, critical race theory and that type of nonsense into the uh, so-called education of your children. Um, it's a mind washing that's going on. Get your kids out of government schools. Simple as that. I did it. You can do it too. This Saturday, September 23rd, is your opportunity to own Prime 
Texas acreage at wholesale prices. I want to introduce you to the Overlook at Richland Chambers, where you can find never-before-offered two- to four-acre lake estates for only $79,900. Come see why this is the best wholesale land value in the state of Texas. On Saturday, September 23rd, you could own a rare eight-plus-acre direct dockable property with over 545 feet of shoreline for less than $200,000. It's less than an hour from Dallas, only two hours from Houston, These properties are serviced by paved roads and utilities. By now, you have the freedom to choose your builder and build when you're ready. Located in the mecca of outdoor activities, including some of the best fishing in Texas. Huge demand for lake property in Texas with breathtaking lake views. This is uh, perfect for second home, retirement, or full-time lake living. Plus, no HOA. That's right, no HOA. Buy directly from the developer. Save thousands on September 23rd. That's this Saturday. These properties are wholesale price to sell in one day. Call them up, 765-LAKE-NOW, or check them out online at txlakefront.com. That's txlakefront.com. We'll be right back. Next week, I'm in Granbury, Texas. Granbury Live. Come hang out with us. Um, yeah. Uh, Going to be in Mills, Wyoming in uh, Lead, South Dakota this weekend. Granbury, Texas next week. I got uh, the Stardome, Birmingham, Alabama coming up next month. I've got cool places like uh, uh, back at, uh, at Shawnee, Oklahoma. Going to be doing a cool show over there. Going to be at the Looney Bend, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Going to be at the Looney Bend in Little Rock, Arkansas. Going to be at the club there in, um, in St. Cloud, Florida, far out in December. I got a ton of stuff coming. I got Cleveland, Texas. I'll go out there and check the uh, the uh, migrant settlement over there, you know. 75,000 uh, over there. It's, uh, yeah, right over there in, in Liberty County. Go over there before, uh, before that area just totally gets taken over. I'm going to be back at the uh, Texan Theater there in Cleveland. It was sold out last time. All these things are available at watchchad.com. And uh, if you want to get a Sheep Get Slaughtered shirt, you know where to go. It's realwomensclub.com. Uh, I love real women. I really do. I love, I, love the, I love all the stuff that comes with real women, too. And I like it when my real women don't have a prostate. Now, understand, as my buddy Jesse Payton always says, you know, if I got a choice and I got to go out, if I got to choose between four ugly women and one really hot tranny, I'm going to go out with the tranny because, because you know, I'm not necess- I, I, I may not be down with LGBT, but I'm definitely, allowed, definitely not down with UGLY. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? These are jokes, people. Subscribe to blazetv.com slash Chad. Use promo code Chad. Join us tomorrow, my buddy. Colonel Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Buzz Patterson. See you then. Bye.